Alrighty. How's it going guys? It's David the Intern of S5 Solutions again coming at you with another video on the Shapoko 2 CNC machine. It's uh, it's been a minute. It's been a hot minute. Uh, about three to four weeks actually. Um, a lot has changed as you can see by the wires and the everything that's all over the table. Um, the CNC has been getting upgrades and I've been working with the controller tuning some things and I'm gonna go over that with you guys. So first things first, I have disassembled the entire CNC machine and added this plate over here. So one of the things is we want to be able to attach all of the controllers, all of the power supplies to the CNC. So we are doing that through this plate. So we bought some extra of this 20 by 20 millimeter rod and put it across the whole length and added this on. We also got a huge shipment of stuff in our... Really, I uh, wanted toys to play with and... Uh, I got them because I begged my boss and he finally caved in. So thanks Craig, you're awesome! Um, I broke one of the toys already. I got a two flute uh, end mill and it, uh, it chipped. So that's always fun. It was a two flute titanium carbon nitride coated end mill, I think. Uh, eighth inch shank and it broke, but such is life. Anyway, with this guy a lot has been changing. Um, the first thing is we've been adding limit switches. So we want to be able to zero it and have it know where it is instead of me just kind of finagling it into getting into the right position. So the way we're doing that is by adding limit switches and that allows you to zero to a known point on your machine. So I've got two limit switches here, two limit switches here, and I just have to add one up here and one down here and that's going to be covering all three axes. Then the next thing is <laughs> the uh, the cable chain. So this has a little story behind it. Um, last summer I worked here, my boss said, David, we have some stuff. And I was like, great, I don't see it. We spent a while looking for it, we couldn't find it. And over the past year, every single time I've been here, I've been like, hmm, did you find the chain? No, nobody's ever found it. Turns out it was buried deep, 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 deep in the bowels of the building. And I finally, finally found it. So we've got some really nice cable chain. And what that's going to be for the uh, x-axis and the y-axis. So it's going to be about, uh, about here-ish and about here-ish. And that'll just make it look nice and pretty, tidying up all these cables. So all of these guys, these new ones that are getting run for all of the limit switches, it, there's a lot of cables now. Again, I'm still going to re-sleeve all of this, but that's coming pretty soon because um, I haven't gotten around to it yet. But it's going to happen. Um, I'm trying to get a new spindle. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully it's going to be a 500 watt spindle. This is a 300 watt 12,000 RPM spindle. I want to get a 500 watt version of this just to get a little bit more oomph when I'm um, taking out chips from the metal. So the other thing is um, this big block. I haven't spoken about it yet, but this big block finally got mounted. The plate on the back is made of steel right here. This plate is made of steel. So what I did is I drilled four holes 20 millimeters apart vertically and 70 millimeters apart horizontally and that allowed me to mount this block that came with our uh, spindle upgrade. So with that we were able to affix this motor very well. It is it is not going to go anywhere. Uh, the other mounting method was pretty... Uh, ew. Really. It's pretty gross. So this this is taking care of a lot of that. Also, we've gotten some upgrades for attaching things to the bed, so we have some step blocks, which are... Honestly, guys, if I could recommend getting one thing for the CNC, get the step blocks. They are amazing. Seriously, treat yourself and get a vice as well. Aside from that, uh, a couple other things have actually changed as well. So we're going to be moving over to this new controller here. The issue with the old one don't get me wrong, it gets the job done, right? The issue with the old one is the current. So those little potentiometers on it, these little, uh, these little white guys down there, um, those are pretty finicky, at least on our board. If you go a little bit more than halfway, the motors just stop going. Like, I know from experience that you can overcurrent motors and the driver will just push out as much current as it wants. Those potentiometers are just like... It's like they're skipping a step halfway, so they go, you know, halfway up and then go back down to zero and then all the way past the halfway mark, they like stay at 25% or something. It's, it's really bad. So I wanted to upgrade that. 
Plus, I wanted to be able to drive the Y-axis motors separately. Putting both on the same controller is putting a little too much strain on one of those chips. So we have two chips that are dedicated to the Y-axis. So on this new controller, there's actually the ability to set which one goes to the, uh, to the A axis. So there's a Z, X, and Y chip. This one's the A chip, and you can specify if you want to control that from these bottom two, these bottom four pins there, which are uh, directly attached to the digital pins on the Arduino, or you can s select to clone an axis. So what I'm doing is I'm cloning the Y axis so that I can connect up two motors to this thing, each get their own channel, which is really, really nice. The other thing is, I'm going away from this power supply, and we got a nice big 24 volt power supply. So that'll be really for just keeping up the, the current to these things um, and making sure we have enough power and it also looks the same as this other one that we have. So the thing is with that, these power supplies are going to get mounted like this. So the fan will be sucking in air from this side, coming in and blowing it out the top. And same with this one, going to be sucking in air from this side. The controller is going to get mounted approximately here. And one of the things that I want to do is this has the ability to attach um, abort, hold, resume, and e-stop buttons. So I'm going to try and uh, cut out on our Glowforge a little acrylic plate that's about, I don't know, yay big. And it's just got buttons on it and big red button for the emergency stop and a couple other smaller buttons. And they're just going to have etched in labels for, you know, stop, emergency stop, things of that nature. And I think it'll look pretty cool, and it's just going to be glow forged out and going to screw some buttons in, and then solder it on and connect them directly to here. So the other thing is with this, this is the CNC controller, or CNC shield for Arduinos. Um, it's a very, very common shield for CNCs. But there's a thing with it. This is meant for Gerbil version 0.9. Um, Gerbil version 1.1 has changed a couple of things. A couple of important things for at least what I want to do. I want to be able to control the CNC machine from the controller. I didn't do that before. As you guys saw from previous previous video, I totally did not do that. Now, I've gotten it working. All I, <laughs> what I what I didn't do was um, I didn't turn the potentiometer. The potentiometer actually dictates the speed, so that was my bad. Uh, <laughs> I guess you look stupid and you you move on. So. I want to be able to control the speed, so this can take a PWM signal in, like everyone was telling me. The Arduino can output a PWM signal. The issue is, um, with Gerbil version 0.9 to Gerbil version 1.1, they switched a couple of pins. The big one being, they switched the Z limit, as well as the, um, oh, what is it? The spindle enable pin. So the spindle enable pin, if I remember correctly, is actually a... Um, PWM signal out now. It takes advantage of pin, I believe, 11 on the Arduino Uno, which is a PWM signal, which is what you use to control this little driver board here. So with this, I have modified it to work for version 1.1. So the two pins here, they're right next to each other. There's a Z limb and a spindle enable. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, I cut the traces on the board and instead, I took some two wires, I soldered it to the top, wrapped them all the way down and around, and re-soldered them down to the bottom, switching them. Because all they did is they just switched. So I took those two, switched them, and now this actually should work for Gerbil version 1.1. Um, aside from that, there's no real difference hardware-wise on Gerbil version 1.1 to Gerbil version 0.9, but that was a major thing that I did want to mention. The other thing is, now that I've got this working, I've been CNCing a lot. Again, it's been a couple weeks since I've talked with you guys. So I've been CNCing a lot. And it's been a lot of fun. I've been working with aluminum. That's been my first choice material. Though I've also been working with foam as well as some plastic. Uh, I prefer aluminum. I think it looks better. Though one of the things is you have to go really slow and yeah, it's tedious. Anyway, so with this guy, I have to re-pin the uh, wires coming out of the controller board or the driver board because they're not pinned. I need to be able to put them on these little headers down there. So I have to do that. That's going to be not too bad. It's just going to be a little tedious for me. I'm going to get around to that off camera. 
Uh, and then I also have to do the same thing for all of the uh, limit switches to connect them up. There's six total spots. There's plus and minus, so you, it knows where its absolute limits are and not just, you know, going to zero, zero or something. Now, one of the things is with this that I've come to realize is there are a lot of different settings that Easel uh, changes. So Easel is a software that we've been using to control it, and a lot of people apparently use Easel to control their CNC because it's quick, it's easy, it's cloud-based, and it's free. I was using it too, but there are, there are a lot of things with it. So when you use Easel to update the firmware on your Arduino uh, for your durable controller, it updates to version 1.1 E... no. 1.1 B? Whatever. That's not the important part. The important part is that it thinks that this is 500 by 500, when, yeah, technically the whole space might be 500 by 500. You know, this has about a max of 250 by 250 on ours. Your mileage may vary. Ours is about 250 by 250 as well. The Z-axis only has a limit of about 80 on ours, whereas in Easel it showed about 190-ish. So those are some settings that you really have to go and change. The other thing was the acceleration as well as the max velocity. So I wanted this to get up to speed fast, so I put the X and Y acceleration pretty high. I only increased my Z acceleration by about 5, uh, I think it's millimeters per second squared. I'm not quite sure, don't quote me on that. I'll, on the screen, I'll put a little um, snippet of the settings that I use uh, for Gerbil version 1.1. So this is also an update from 0 0.9 to 1.1. That's the big thing, is that I could not really find anything on how to properly update that. So I've been toying around, and I finally, finally found something on it. And I'm, I, I guess I'm sharing it with you guys. So I got a new controller. This thing with the Arduino and the cable was 20 bucks, so recommended, uh, very highly recommended. Um, just 3D printed out some cable track. Uh, this was the stuff we bought. And ultimately I'm gonna be using it to clean up the CNC, as well as attaching the new power supplies to here and making it look nice and pretty. Now one of the things I'll show you guys is I'll show you what I managed to do with it. So, uh, nope, not that box. Ah. So I sorted everything recently, and um, we, we're in Washington, so I wanted to machine out uh, Mount Rainier. This is a 10 kilometer by 10 kilometer sort of square of Mount Rainier. It failed halfway through. That's partially my fault, partially the CNC's fault. Uh, at one point, my computer fell asleep on this one, and so it, uh, well, it disconnected and the CNC stopped, which is unfortunate but I was using Fusion 360 to generate the G-code for this, and then I imported it into Easel using the G-code import option. Now the issue with that is you can't change anything aside from the, the speed uh, percentage, but it, it creates some really, really nice finishes. This one was also pretty poor. Um, this last part, I didn't center it properly, so that was, that was my fault. But ultimately, a lot has changed since I last talked with you guys. Just wanted to give you guys a quick little update. Yeah, I guess that is a... I guess that's it. Not much else has changed. The controller is getting an update. The power supply is getting an update. I updated the axes and I gave them all limit switches. I updated the panel for the CNC. Um, and I, I had spent a long, long time machining. One of the other things that we're going to update is use this, um, what is it, 3 inch by 1 inch uh, extrusion, split it in half right down the middle, sort of fold them, like so this half comes down here, right? And mount that to the table as a nice little place to secure everything with. So that's going to be really, really nice. I guess, uh, I guess that's it really. Uh, this has just been a quick little update video. I'm going to put a picture in the video of the settings that I have for this because the update was very tedious for me to try and figure out because you have to learn what each setting does. Some of the settings pertain to this machine and this machine only. Some of the settings you might want to change. So I have set the maximum velocity to 100 inches per minute, which is 2540 uh, millimeters per minute. Um, you might want to change that. I want to be able to hit 
Ideally, 80 inches per minute on aluminum, I think, would be really nice. Um, especially with the bits that I got, the brand new ones. But we will we'll see how that goes. Anyway, um, again, this has been David, the intern of S5 Solutions, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.